Let's talk about it with editor-in-chief of The Daily Wire, Ben Shapiro. Ben, welcome. Great to have you. Um, I know that you've raised some concerns or at least uh, pointed out that this potentially does not line up with some of her political leanings. Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm, I'm very sick of politicians just generally claiming that some sort of heritage allows them to get off the hook for their current political positions. I've never heard anything about Ocasio-Cortez's Jewish heritage before this. We've seen politicians like Hillary Clinton and John Kerry do the same thing, talking about their Jewish heritage, that they don't actually have to talk about their policies with regard to Jews. Ocasio-Cortez is incredibly close with people like Linda Sarsour and Rashida Tlaib and Ilhan Omar, and she's not shy with uh, about associating with folks who are fans of the anti-Semitic boycott, divest, and sanctions mm -hmm. regime. So. Again, it's it's an easy way of avoiding the question, but it has about as much political weight as somebody being accused of racism and then saying, well, I once had a black friend. Well, it's interesting. You bring up BDS and you brought that up in a tweet today because she was asked her her spokesperson was asked about it on Friday and kind of gave no comment on it and where she potentially stands on it. Uh, but you have Litvin uh, retweeted what you had said and said this. There's no doubt Ben Shapiro is the quintessential, quote, Uncle Tom of Jews and his mind endorsing BDS somehow outweighs being Jewish. Poor Shapiro, he was skillfully shut down by Ocasio and still feels sore over it. Yeah, well, I mean, this is the usual line, is that if you criticize Ocasio-Cortez in any way, this is because you're obsessed with Ocasio-Cortez. Again, here's the reality. If you are in favor of boycott, uh, boycotting, divesting, and sanctioning the Jewish state, but you're fine with everything the Palestinians are doing, the Iranians are doing, the Saudis are doing, the Yemenis are doing, the Afghanis are doing, or any other country in the region that has no human rights to speak of, but you're somehow going to boycott Israel because somebody's building an extra bathroom in Jewish East Jerusalem, then suddenly that's, that's not anti semitic of course, it's anti-Semitic by definition. I mean, this is the State Department says if you are to treat Israel in a way you would treat no other state, then this is the definition of anti-Semitism. BDS is anti-Semitism. And Ocasio-Cortez has not disassociated from anyone who has associated with, with BDS or radical anti-Israel activity. I know at one point you offered up, I think it was $10,000 that you would donate to charity for her to come and debate you. Any response on that? <laughs> no, <laughs> and, okay. and, and it wasn't just debating me. It was, it was also she could come and just do an interview on my show, and I okay. said that you know we could do it for no pay. I mean, but this was this was considered catcalling. She accused me of catcalling. I mean, has she looked at me? I'm not exactly a, a cat caller. The Orthodox Judaism sort of prohibits that. It does. Okay, so keep us up to date if anything develops on that front. Um, I also want to ask you about the fact that you have been named the keynote speaker for the March for Life. It is something that we've covered for years. I've been out there many times myself. Come snowstorm or sleet or anything else that's happening in January, there are thousands and thousands of people who come here to march uh, commemorating Roe v. Wade. They are pro-life in nature. Um, tell us how you came about being associated with them and, and what message you hope to bring this year. Well, I mean, the March for Life is an amazing event. I've been watching it for years, and I never had a chance to attend. And when they came to me and offered a keynote slot at the March for Life, I thought, what better way to bring attention to the most pressing social issue in America and, and of the time? It is the moral issue upon which all Americans will be judged, I think, not only in this life, but, but in another. Uh, and future generations are going to look back and wonder how it is that so many Americans stood by and basically shrugged their shoulders as babies in the womb were killed for the sake of convenience. So I, I couldn't be more excited about standing with the folks who are marching for life and standing with the unborn. I want to ask you if you were surprised at all that you got some pushback. Um, in the Washington Post, an art article by Charles Kamasi, he's a professor and he's a board member of Democrats for Life. Um, he says, despite Shapiro's star power and stature, I consider his appearance a serious mistake for the march, one that will move us even further from being understood as the broad-based human rights movement we need to embody in order to go from fringe to mainstream. He tweeted this, hey, March for Life, who will be featured this year to represent the millions and millions of pro-lifers who don't identify as politically conservative. Well, I mean, again, I'm, I'm more than happy, and I, and I wish that there were more Democrats who identified as pro-life. But the question here is not whether it's a conservative or, or leftist issue. The real question here is whether it is indeed about the unborn children. And that's why whatever I've said about abortion has no relevance to Democrat or Republican other than the Democratic Party has become the party of abortion. I wish that more Democrats were pro-life. It is not my fault or the fault of Republicans that so many Democrats have moved out of the pro-life category and into the radical pro-choice category. And pretending otherwise is not not going to change the facts on the ground. Well, wherever you are on the spectrum, pro-life to pro-choice, it's a really interesting event that uh, doesn't always get covered uh, fairly, I think, here in Washington. So I encourage people to you know, check it out for themselves and make an objective assessment of what goes on there. Ben Spiro, great to see you. Thanks for coming on. Good to see you too. Thanks so much.